Do you feel stuck? Meaning, do you have brain fog? Do you have digestive issues? Is your lymphatic drainage routine not working? Do you have all of these symptoms and you cannot figure out what's going on? Supplements aren't working, diet changes isn't working. Well, I'm here to tell you that it might be your nervous system. Hear me out. It could be that you are not getting into a parasympathetic state. Our parasympathetic nervous system is what controls our ability to rest, digest, and drain is what I like to throw in because if we are not draining, our body can't detox. And if it can't detox, we end up driving inflammation, which can cause a plethora of issues. In this video, we're gonna talk about the parasympathetic nervous system. We're gonna talk about how can you identify or test how well your parasympathetic nervous system is working. Wouldn't that be nice to know? And then we're gonna talk about things that you can do specifically at home in order to help activate your parasympathetic nervous system so that you can get into a state of rest, digest, and drain. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Caitlin Szczeski. I am a certified functional medicine practitioner that has been ultimately helping people's lymphatic systems and bodies drain since 2010. I've had my hands on hundreds of thousands of people over the years, especially when I had a physical practice. And ultimately, I found that every single person benefited from lymphatic drainage. So let's talk about the nervous system today. Most of us have stressful lives. And here's the thing, even when we don't think it's that stressful, our body, if it thinks that we are in a state of danger, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, it doesn't know the difference, it just views it as danger, it keeps us in a heightened state, meaning our heart rate's gonna be higher, you know, we're not gonna digest food very well, we're ultimately gonna be in a state where we can fight for our lives or flee, like run away, because our body's trying to save us. The problem with that though is it creates so many issues down the road with the inability to properly rest, properly drain, absorb nutrients, heal, like the list goes on and on. So what I find when people are doing everything, they're doing all the things, and they're like, nothing's working. It's because their body is stuck in a state of fight or flight. It's stuck in sympathetic dominance, or it could be stuck in parasympathetic inhibition, meaning your body isn't able to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. So we're gonna talk about in this video exactly what you can do to stimulate it so that you can get out of that fight or flight state. Now let's talk a little bit about the vagus nerve because the vagus nerve is really the parasympathetic nerve. Like this is the powerhouse. And the vagus nerve, why it's called the vagus nerve is because it wonders. Ultimately, it comes out at the base of our skull, right below our ear, and it runs all the way down, like our SCM here, and then dives deep. And this is the nerve that innervates things like our heart, our lungs, our intestines, our stomach, our diaphragm. Hmm, does that sound like all of our drainage organs? Yeah. So if that nerve is not stimulating those organs, we're gonna have a drainage issue. Makes sense, right? Of course. And so what are some things that we can do to measure? How can we know how well our parasympathetic nervous system is responding or like actively working? Well, we're gonna look at what's called parasympathetic tone. And you might be like, Dr. Kellen, what the heck is parasympathetic tone? It's ultimately how well your parasympathetic system is functioning. How is it activated? Now, here's a couple ways that we can test it. First, we can test it by our breath. So the number of breaths per minute. Now, most people are going to be taking anywhere between like 10 and 14 breaths per minute. Really, we want to be closer to six. And we don't want these shallow chest breathing. Why? That means we're not activating our diaphragm. And guess what? The diaphragm really does play double duty here. One, the diaphragm is innervated, so it gets its signal from the vagus nerve. So if the vagus nerve isn't telling the diaphragm to move, it's not gonna move. But if we're not actively working the diaphragm, we're not sending that message back up to the brain to tell like the vagal nerve to work. It's one of those like catch 22s. So we gotta make sure that we are diaphragmatic breathing so that our tummy is coming out when we breathe in and then when we exhale, our tummy's coming in and up. Now the diaphragm is also going to act like a massage for those internal organs. It's going to help like massage our intestines and massage our like large and small. It's going to massage like just everything in there, making it function a little bit better and keeping circulation moving. So take a second and time. See how are you breathing? How fast are you breathing? Another way that you can test for 
vagal tone is by wearing a device like an aura ring or a whoop band, or there's so many out there now. But what it does is it's ultimately measuring your heart rate variability. Now, what does that mean? It's ultimately measuring your heart rate, so the lowest and the highest, and giving you the variability between those. And what we want to see is a higher heart rate variability. The higher your heart rate variability, it means the more active your parasympathetic nervous system is. It means that you are able to get into a parasympathetic state, which is fantastic. The lower it is, you're likely struggling to get into a rest, digest, and drain. So your parasympathetic nervous system isn't functioning properly. It doesn't matter what device you use. If you have one, just look at your heart rate variability because that is a really good test for, like I said, parasympathetic tone. Now, let's talk about once you know your parasympathetic tone, what are some things that you can do to help stimulate it? Because we do live in a stressful world. We sit a lot, we're go, go, go. Like we don't really take time to slow down and just relax. Here are some of my favorite, for the most part, free things that you can do at home. First, it's deep, slow breaths. Why? Well, one, it's gonna help with drainage, right? Because diaphragmatic breathing is really the only way we're gonna be able to drain our lymph fluid from our belly button down to our toes. All that lymphatic fluid needs to be pulled up into the thoracic duct and it needs to be done via diaphragmatic breathing. So that's one of the reasons. But two, remember, that's going to activate or stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. So one of the, my favorite things to do is to slow our breath down and by belly breathing. So put one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly and take slow breaths. Box breathing is great. You can do a four count inhale, hold for four counts, exhale for four plus counts. If you can go longer than four, like if your exhale is longer than your inhale, studies have shown that that functions better. And then after you've exhaled, hold it for four counts and then repeat that cycle for a minute, three minutes. That is really going to help calm things down and start to tell your brain and your body that, okay, we are safe. We are okay. So slow diaphragmatic breathing is a fantastic way to go about it. Another, well, four simple ways to do it is you can sing. So throw on your favorite song. I go back to usually 90s, 90s, early 2000s, when I just want to jam out and I just want to sing. I am by no means a good singer, but I 100% will be belting out songs when I know them in the car and it's good for you. So you should give that a try. Plus, if you have kids, you can get them singing too with you. You can also hum if you don't want to sing. I am not a good hummer. Humming is not a forte for me. Granted, neither is singing, but singing is easier for me. But you can hum or you can chant. And one way that I throw in like a humming chant is with my breathing. So on my exhale, instead of just exhaling, like I will do something like, Did you notice I could go a whole lot longer when I'm putting a sound behind it, which is gonna extend the exhale, which is going to reduce the number of breaths that I need to take. So that's a really great way to incorporate two into one. And then the last thing is you can gurgle. So I don't recommend doing this at a restaurant, but when you take a sip, gargle a little bit before you swallow. That gargling, the singing, the chanting, the humming, it's ultimately activating the vocal cords, which is right next to the vagus nerve. And so that activation of the vocal cords is stimulating the vagal nerve, all good things. So if you can pick and choose and do those things a couple times a day, that's gonna help stimulate the vagal nerve. Now, another thing that I really love that not everybody does is cold therapy. Cold therapy, especially that runs along here, down your neck, is really gonna help stimulate and activate the vagal nerve. So you can do a cold shower, you can do an ice pack. I have these like little cold ones that I keep in my freezer and then before bed I pull them out and rub it down my neck. That really helps calm things down and I do get a better sleep. So that's something that I will do is cold therapy. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is vibration. So you can get like a vibration ball and I'll put the link below if you wanna get this, but the vibration or a tuning fork, specifically with the frequency of 528, is really good for stimulating the vagal nerve. Now, why that's good is because it's ultimately activating and innervating that whole muscle. So those are just a few things that you can easily do at home to get that parasympathetic nervous system 
rebooted so that you can get into a state of rest, digest, and drain. Let me know below which ones you guys are gonna do because if you have any wonky symptoms going on, I highly recommend looking into your nervous system and see how it's functioning. Thanks for being here. Happy draining.